Good evening, and welcome to another LEGO Speed Champions build. Uh, today, um, tonight is particularly exciting because right now I technically still have less than half the Generation 2 collection. But after I build tonight's car, I will technically have more than half of the collection. This is car number 21 in a series that contains 41 cars. 20 cars before this one, 20 cars after this one. So this is the exact halfway point tonight in the series. So for tonight, we're going to be building one of the earlier wave cars for uh, Speed Champions Generation 2, the Koenigsegg Jesco. You'll notice when we switched over, you'll notice when I switch over the camera, that this is very much what I call a damaged box special. All right, so... Um, I've done a few of these damage box specials in the Speed Champions line. A few of my sets have been pristine, like the ones I was able to get directly from LEGO and a couple of the other ones. But a few of the cars I was able to get really good deals on for damaged boxes. And this is the most damaged beat up box of them all. Here, take a look. You can see all that damage all bent up and stuff. If I did the shake test, the, the seal is still intact. It's still a perfectly legitimately sealed Lego set. It's just really beat up on the outside. It kind of reminds me when our uh, Ticket to Ride Rails and Sales uh, game box was in a car accident. And the box was really smashed up. But all the contents were fine and undamaged. And we, t we taped up the box. We repaired the box. And it's still good to this day. But this box, of course, this box is just trash. I always recycle the boxes when I finish my Lego builds. So getting a damaged box special is beneficial towards me because the sellers give a discount because of the perceived notion that buyers prefer uh, intact boxes. And then uh, the box is damaged, so they give a discount. And I don't keep the boxes anyway. So in the end, uh, if you're uh, so that's a strategy for you. If you're looking on eBay for sealed Lego sets and you notice in the picture the box has some damage, if the seller is accepting offers, you can get some good deals. I've had that happen to me for at least three or four of the other Speed Champion single cars. All the two packs I've done so far have been pretty uh, pristine. Well, three of them were directly from Lego store, so I'm talking too much. Let's talk about this car. This is the Koenigsegg Jesco, or Yesco, I think my brother said it's pronounced. I'm not really sure. I've heard it pronounced both ways in reviews. And prior to prior to starting my Speed Champions collection, I had ever, never actually heard of this car manufacturer, believe it or not. I don't really follow the racing circuits, and Koenigsegg doesn't really have a following here in the here in the United States. Um, it's more of a, this car is more popular around Europe. I think it's a German car. And especially popular in the racing circuits. Anyway, so um, the Koenigsegg, you'll also notice it's um, the picture. I don't think the picture does it justice. I mean, I've only seen limited footage of this on YouTube. because I. Ha um, but yeah, the pictures. In my opinion, the pictures that I've seen the set, it's one of the less impressive of the cars. But I did see some reviews, and it's just as cool as the others in its own way. Um, I'm sure the pictures don't do it justice. But you can see in the picture, it looks really rough around the edges here. I'm not talking about the box damage. You can see there's a lot more exposed studs uh, on, the, on the surfaces of this car than is normal for a Speed Champions car. It would be interesting to see how the actual car looks when built together and in hand, but this is one of the rougher looking cars and one of the reasons I put it, put it off so long. But my plans for the Speed Champions garage is to finish the remaining single packs. So there will be eight more single packs behind this car, although probably only four of those, more than likely only four of those are going to be individually streamed. There's a Nissan, an Audi, the new June 1st uh, Lamborghini, Lamborghini Vision concept car. Um, there's the Mc, and the uh, McLaren F1. 
that's sitting in my build queue right now. So that, that will bring us up to 25. And then we have technically four more single sets, but it works out that I'll be probably doing those as double episodes because two of them are Ferrari. So being the same manufacturer, I'm justified in doing a double episode there. And then there's a two from the Fast and Furious movie series that I'll be doing as a double episode because they come from the same franchise. And then after that, there's a six more two packs that I'll be getting after I finish all the single cars. So that's the rough plan for the next couple months as we move into the second half of the Speed Champions Garage. I'll probably be able to fin finish by summer if I juggle my expenses correctly. <laughs> and then we'll be able to move on to other LEGO themes and other parts of my LEGO collection. So yeah, box, front of the box, and standard uh, Speed Champions tradition. You can see the car driving away from us. It's interesting that they opted for more of an overhead view of the back of the car than the straight back of the car they used for most sets. And you can see here, there's also a photo of the real car. And you can see the real car looks smooth without all those studs on top. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this car comes together. The photo of the real car shows me an interesting shape. So uh, this box is really beat up, so I'm not even sure if I'll be able to push the tab. I won't be able to give them in. Oh, there we go. Opened right up. So we're breaking the seal right now. And sticker sheet was sitting at the top. That's a lot more stickers than I anticipated, this being a mostly plain colored car. About 21 stickers. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. We almost had a coincidence here. It looks like there's exactly 20 stickers on the sheet. Uh, one more sticker, and the n number of stickers on the sheet would have ma matched the car's uh, position within my build queue. So this is my 21st car, 20 stickers on the sheet. All right, let's keep unloading stuff. The wheel bag, we'll set this aside until we need it. As you can see, I've also pulled out the tool in case we need it. The instructions, which as you know, we don't use the little instruction book. I'm going to set that aside. We have the PDF that we run up in the corner. So you can follow along as the build. All right. Here's bag one and bag two. We are going to set aside bag two for right now. And we're going to hold on to bag one because we need it. And we are going to begin. Let's go ahead and begin the build. So of course the first step is to open bag one. You can see here from the picture, this is going to be a fairly standard Speed Champions build. Bag one is the back half of the car, and bag two is the front half of the car. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. Oh, so many pieces went close to the edge there.
Okay, lots of little pieces here. And so we start by building the driver as usual. He's got a little, this driver's confident. He's got a little smirk on his face. I know because the minifigure head is staring up at me from the pile. I'll spare you the, I'll spare you the details. That's one part of building Lego that I sometimes find a little creepy is the very beginning before you put the minifigure together when the minifigure head just stares up at you from the pile. Yeah, he's definitely one of the more confident looking drivers. Let's find his hair piece. And he's got a really cool racing suit. All gray, but still looks really cool. There's his suit, his racing jacket, and then the back. You can see the Koenigsegg logo. Okay. One more look at it. Look at that overconfident smile he's got. He's ready to race. Except he's not because he doesn't have a car yet. So let's set him aside to watch his car being built. And of course, uh, we'll we'll, add, we'll prep his helmet. We have to find the little clear visor piece to put into his helmet. There it is. This is a standard uh, Speed Champions plain black helmet. Most of the drivers have black, a few have white. I've encountered one gray helmet so far. There's not really a lot of variance in the helmets, but he doesn't have a car to drive yet, which means he doesn't actually need the helmet yet. So as usual, we'll just set the helmet next to him. And the picture says he also gets one of the traditional uh, Speed Champions wrenches which will sit down next to him because his car is not ready yet. All right, I think we're ready to begin building. Starting with our standard uh, Speed Champions chassis piece. And now it looks like uh, we're going to start putting things on it. Starting with what looks like the first axle block. Pretty much all the Speed Champions cars have started with it doing the axle block on the chassis. I'll try and do, as usual, my fat fingers get in the way, but I will do, try and do as much of the build on camera as I can. I can't guarantee that the stickers will fully be on camera because um, I need to do a precision on the stickers, which means sitting in a comfortable position with my arms directly in front of me. I can't really uh, contort like I sometimes do with the actual building. So it's just the one car for tonight, another short stream. Um, but we will be picking up with gaming streams, I think, next week. All right, so it looks like here we have an assembly for the other axle block. Interesting use of a lime green plate there. I'm sure that won't be anywhere in uh, view when we finish the build. There's not a lot of color on this particular car. It looked like it was like a mostly white with a big black tail fin. One of the more prominent tail fins on a Speed Champions car, if I'm to judge by the pictures correctly. But again, I haven't always been able to. Uh, judge the car accurately by just the pictures. So yeah, we'll see how it comes together. 
So the chassis piece now has both of the axle blocks attached. And here we're going to start uh, building up the uh, bits of the car. There's a tiny, there's lots of little tiny pieces just like usual. One thing I like about Speed Champions is that even though some of the cars may look relatively similar on the outside, each car is a fully unique build. You never know what to expect with each car. I mean, some things are expected like building the back half and then the front half. Most of the cars use the standard chassis piece. I just knocked a piece on the floor. Hold on. Okay. It's not a it's not a Lego stream unless you accidentally knock one piece on at least one piece on the floor, right? Okay, let's keep going. Okay, this piece here. Yeah, that secures the axle block, that one plate there. So we shouldn't have that problem again moving forward. So yeah, this is 21 and I have two more in hand right now. So I have to acquire six more cars to finish the single packs, including the June 1st car. But there's also two two packs coming out on June 1st as well. So we do still have, I do still have 12 sets to buy. But yeah, we're moving forward with this. By the end of summer, my Speed Champions uh, uh, Generation 2 collection is going to be complete. I've never really been a fan of race cars before and I'm still not going to get into racing. But I like these and when I get, when I, when I have enough budget to do my own full Lego City one day, I'll have 40 unique cars driving around the city. going on here. So it looks like this car has a lot of uh, bricking up for the shaping in the back. Some of the older Speed Champions cars did a lot of uh, straight brick work on the interior to fill in the, um, to fill in some of the volume. But um, we don't see so much of that in the newer cars, this uh, straight blockiness. Okay, so we have uh, the wheel arches and our first bit of the car's uh, exterior color. And then this piece here. That's interesting. Speed Champions doesn't usually do the engines, but this car, this piece looks like an engine, so it must be exposed and that's why it's included. And there's printing on it. Hold up. Okay, take a little look at this engine block. And as you can see, there's some printing down there along the bottom, down there along the bottom edge of it. I don't know how well I can get that. Yeah, there you can see it a little bit. So there's a little bit of an exposed engine look on this car, it looks like. That's cool. All right, so now we're going to do this assembly.
our first sticker. Okay. Let's what which sticker is this? Okay, this is one sticker I'm going to want to line up right on the edge of the slow piece, which we, this is one of the ones that requires absolute precision because it looks like it has color blocking. With Speed Champions, a lot of the stickers are used for color blocking, which means you want, you need to have precision when lining them up. So yeah, uh, when I do stickers, it often goes off camera. There's not really anything I can do about that. Okay, I seem to line that one up good because the sticker, the black shape on the sticker runs into the black portions here at the side of the assembly, like that. And then this section uh, will go onto the back of the car, like that. And I assume we're going to do another one of those for the other side to complete the look. Yeah. Here we go. I really like the Speed Champions line. I mean, I keep saying that. One of the other cool things about the Speed Champions lines is some of the cars are retired and don't really fit into this, but for the most part, Speed Champions only come in two side size classes, one car sets and two car sets. A lot of uh, so many other LEGO series come in all sorts of side class, uh, size classes, which kind of makes it hard to budget for collecting those because you never know what you're going to see. But with the exception of some of the retired cars um, with Speed Champions, uh, you kind of know what to expect in terms of budgeting. And yes, there have been some price increases over the last few waves, but um, for the most part, you know you'll be uh, spending, you know you can expect to uh, spend a certain amount for single car sets and then for double car sets based on availability, of course. I've noticed some of the retired two packs are like going for a lot and so when we get towards the end of the series they might be a challenge to get but we're going to press through and get them all. We're more than halfway through after the stream. We may as well keep our quest going. Give me a moment. Okay. No, it's supposed to look like that. Okay. I thought I got a piece of hair stuck in one of the pieces here. Okay, um, that's cool. Make sure everything's lined up. So that's what that's a, that's what we've put onto the back so far. You can see those two little sections and the stickers that continue out the color blocking. And now we have some uh, wedges for some more of the shaping as well as the corner tiles to fill in a stud layer for further building. All this blue that we're seeing inside and yellow is interesting because I didn't see any of that in the picture. Those are colors I think that are going to be completely buried and not visible in the final build once we get everything together.
Okay, so now we have some of these uh, pieces with the texture, the textured bricks. That's cool. Well, given their positioning, I think they're going to get covered. So why use the texture ones if they're going to get covered? I guess maybe they're a little bit exposed. We'll have to see as the build progresses, I guess. Okay. Okay, now it's time for an assembly. Interesting. We've got a regular plate and then a plate with side printing. And then this tile. Okay. That's a normal plate. All right, let's find the special one. Okay, that's a normal one. So basically I'm looking for a tiny one by one plate with a little bit of side printing, a very tiny logo. Unless that was the one. There it is. We found it. So let me show you what's going on here. Because this is a detail that's definitely going to be overlooked in the final build. It's so tiny. I'm not sure where this tile is going to go, but you can see that one plate on the end of it has side printing. I don't know why my camera's not focusing. Maybe because it's too tiny. But it's the Jesco logo. And so now if I put this in the back of the car over that exposed engine block. Now if I show you the back of the car, now it is focusing a little better, although still not great. And you can see the Jesco logo next to the engine block there. That's pretty cool. I always appreciate things like tiny little side printing. That would have been hell as a sticker. So it's a good thing it wasn't a sticker. So plates, we need to keep layering up, up the inside shaping because the inside shaping is what's going to influence and direct the exterior shaping. Okay, where is the, that is, that it, yeah, that's supposed to be a jump plate. There it is. Okay, so this step is all within the uh, all within the exterior color. So it looks like we're starting to fill in the the um, outer uh, coloring and shaping now. We have some wedges. There's a lot of use of these tiny wedges and speed champions for purposes of uh, shaping little angled bits like that. And then there's these big slope pieces here that run in here like this. And yeah. So 
as you can see, uh, most of the coloration for the back of the car is in place now. That's what it looks like with those slopes attached. And now we're just going to fill in some more uh, shaping and wedging here, it looks like. Um, need some more of these slopes. Basically, we're filling in the shaping above the wheel arches right now. Okay. So this is one part of the car that is going to look clean. These pieces are kind of smooth. But there's still a lot of places in the picture where there were some exposed studs, more than usual on one of these cars. So we'll see how it all comes out at the end. Okay, here's some more of the colored plating, which suggests we have some more layering to do uh, towards the body of the car. As you can see, the uh, the top of the car is getting thicker. And I'm actually going to check these plates because usually with the one by ones, they they give us a spare, and I want to make sure that the if there's a spare of the printed version, that it gets into the spare parts bag for proper inventory logging later. So I just want to check this other plate. The easiest thing to do, I guess, would be to check these two to see if either of them would be the spare. Okay. So I do have to check this piece and make sure. Okay, no, this one's blank also. Okay, so maybe we didn't get a spare of the printed plate, which is perfectly fine because it has limited application, it has limited usefulness. And now we have some green jumps. Interesting. So yet another layer of green going on here. And now we're getting getting into some trans pieces here. Okay, so it looks like we're creating the suggestion of a rear of the rear window here. Oh man, I messed up that placement. And I can't even get my fingers in there. I wonder, shoot, okay, 
I'm going to have to get way in there, I think, in order to fix this problem. The problem is the piece that that tile is on is embedded underneath other pieces. I may have to do a full disassembly here. Well, that's breaking too much off. But yeah, if I can, wow, I'm getting no closer to the piece. This was a bad idea. Okay. But now I can get to the slope. And getting to the slope means I can attack the tile from the from the side. And yep, the tile's coming right off. So while I have this in my hands, I'll go ahead and put in these two uh, designated slope pieces here, and then I'll reassemble everything. Most of this is going to be off camera as I need to concentrate to get everything back how it was. Okay, how does the rest of this all go together? Shoot. Okay, so that was like that. And this wheel arch connects like that, I think. And yeah, there was the slope. This piece did what now? This piece went over like this. Yeah, that goes back together. Okay, and then this piece. lines up like that. Okay, so this piece goes into here, I think. If I can get it to attach. Yeah. So yeah, the crisis has been averted pretty much. I pretty much got mostly back together. I think that's the most I've ever had to break a partial build to fix a mistake ever on LEGO. Not just on stream, but ever. Well, actually, no. I can think of one other set. I had to break the set even more. Okay, then. All we have left to do is to connect this uh, whole section together and boom. We have one more little slope to put on. Now that the car has been, re the back of the car has been reassembled. As you can see, our little crisis has been averted. The rest of the car is ready to be we're ready to continue now. Yep, 
and we just lost a lot of time with that fi with that fix. So it looks like we're starting to build up some of the interior details now. I'm sorry if uh, this bit is off camera. It's black on black and in addition it involves tiny hard to grip pieces. So even if it was on camera you wouldn't be able to see that particular step. Okay. Lots of little tiny pieces here. Well, not lots. There's only three pieces in this step. You know, it's definitely the gray one. And then a little bit of a lever going on. And now we're going to build up another section. So far this assembly is using a lot of little tiny pieces, which is why it's not that well on camera, but and then we get the little half pyramid slope thing. And then we have uh, these bigger slopes at the sides. So this is going to go into the seating bowl like this. Interesting, creating some more side studs to join with the other brackets for when we build up the sides of the car later. That's cool. You can see how that assembly just created the seating bowl. Well, you can't really see it because it's black on black, but that's cool how that came together. So now we're dealing with a little more transparency, some more of the some more of the back window suggestion going on here, and then uh, the big wedges here that fill in the the shape of the sides of the back of the car there, like this. And now I can see how the shape is evolving and coming together. All right. 
seven stickers in the step. Bear with me because the silver on these stickers is kind of foily and bright. That's a nice touch. So it looks like this detail uh, doesn't actually connect with anything on the other slopes. So I can uh, line that up with the edge. And that's going to be an extension of the canopy window, I think. What these two little stickers are meant to be here. After this step, we're about halfway done with the sticker sheet. I want to make sure these line up. Okay, that's pretty close to the edge. Now these others, they do. Uh, these are uh, these others don't really have a continuation of, off of each other. So these other things, I should be able to just put on the car as is. As long as they look good. But there's no really patterns. Even though these two slopes are adjacent, the patterns on the two stickers don't actually um, don't actually match up. They're not continuations of each other. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. In fact, the silver I think is more meant to be a continuation of whatever's gonna go on this inside. So yeah. All right, let's do the other two, the last two stickers, which is basically the same two details on the other side now. sticker. There it is. I can say even though we're only we've only built half about half the car so far. The part that uh, we have built is looking a bit better in person than it does in the pictures. And again because of my low res camera well, because of the limitations of my camera and lighting, you're only going to get to see this as good as the pictures I have seen prior, even though I'm experiencing this car in person for the first time. I think I am going to combine, combine the remaining two Ferrari sets into a two car special. Okay, didn't leave a gap on that side. Why is there a big nasty gap on this side? You know what? I'm going to pull up this wedge so I can adjust the sticker a little better. Only because I lined it up so perfectly on the other side that the gap on this side would be noticeable if it's not also lined up exact. And I'm in danger of butchering the sticker. I already have what looks like it might be a permanently visible crease. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it any better than it already is. Not terrible, but could be better. 
Okay, so now it looks like we're going to work on that iconic uh, tail fin thing that we saw. Usually with Speed Champions cars, the tail fin, when they have it, is the last part to go on. However, um, it may be that part of the structure for this car relies on it, which is why we're, um, we're working on it now, probably. So yeah, this is definitely the tail fin. You can tell by the shape of these pieces that are going together. These wedge pieces, they make this look. Everything lying. And then we do some tiling to smooth up parts of the tail fin. And then we go on to the bottom. And we add some brackets. And we've passed the halfway point in the instructions. And we still have a few pieces left for bag one. So bag two will probably go together pretty quickly. This is one of the more unique tail fins across the Speed Champions line. More than half of the cars have racing tails, but this car, um, I've never seen one shaped quite like this. Yeah, like that's not going to fly off of its single stud connection. Okay. Um, wedge pieces with stickers. Okay. These stickers are tiny, and these pieces are tiny, so I can't really show them off without fat fingering. So I'll just show you the tail at the end and point out the stickers. Get another sticker. And another sticker. So yeah, a little green stripe needs to go on that end of the sticker. Okay. So 
So yeah. Remember what I said at the beginning of the stream when I said I was unimpressed by how the car looked in pictures? Well, let's reserve judgment till I actually finish now that it's in hand. I mean, some of the other cars definitely are cooler, definitely look cooler, but this car has got some very unique uh, shaping going on. And I'm starting to appreciate this car a little more than I was before. There's a few other cars in the line that um, are like that for me as well. In fact, this is the this is the only car in the line that I actually wasn't really impressed by looking at the pictures. And it gets to be the exact halfway focal point, center point, I mean, of the process of building this garage. So it does have that going for it. And now we we sticker this other tile. And this tile is going to go on the other side and secure that tail fin extension once we get it on straight. Goes on there like that. So this is that big tail fin section. You can see these wedge pieces in the back have the number and then these tiles on the side have the uh, Koenigsegg logo and a green stripe. And the other side looks exactly the same so I'm not going to bother showing it. Okay, so this plugs into the gap here in the green studs. and attaches onto that transparent plate on the jump and then the rest of it rests against the top of the car like that. Interesting. Interesting. Interesting attachment for an interesting tail assembly. That's what the back of the car looks like with the tail attached. And it's black on black but you can see some of those exposed studs on top. There's a lot of exposed studs on top of the tail. Time for bag two. I know it shows to open the wheels, but we're gonna wait until we're gonna wait until we the instructions tell us to put the wheel covers on before we open the bag. Usual. Let's set the tires aside so they don't roll around on us. Very nice printed canopy to set aside as well. Yeah. It doesn't look like there's a huge number of pieces for bag two. We should be able to breeze right through it. We just passed the hour mark of stream as well. So now we got to start filling in the uh, interior structure that's going to lead to the shaping of the front of the car. 
We've done this uh, 20 times before together. We're going to do it 20 times more together. Interesting that we're putting a clip in the front of this assembly here. Usually when you see a clip or a hinge, it means it's going to be used for some precise shaping. It would be interesting to see how this front of the car builds up. Ah, we have a whole assembly going on here, which judging by the little inset picture, Looks like it's going to make up a good chunk of the front of the car. Speed Champions does this a lot with uh, front, back, and side detail, where it puts a lot of the structure into sub assemblies at the front and back of the car. Some more of the wedge plates. This this assembly has some interesting shaping going on here. Ah, we have to do a sticker. The sticker is just a stripe, so I hope I can center it properly. Stripes are a big deal, especially when not centered properly. Okay, um, wedges. So yeah, the Lego collection is going to continue beyond Speed Champions. Um, but at, after Speed Champions is done, Lego sets are going to be fewer and far between because I'm going to want to save budget for some bigger sets in the future. I have a whole wish list of uh, sets I would like to own and put on display around my room. So yeah, because those sets will require more time to budget for, uh, Lego streams are going to go back to being more on the computer than in, than in real life, I think. Nothing too crazy. I'm not going at it for any of the multi-hundreds of dollar sets. I don't have that kind of space. And you can, this table is not big enough for us to work with sets like that. But like a thousand pieces I think I can handle on stream. And by the time we finish Speed Champions, we'll have the, um, the spare laptop will be set up, meaning I'll be able to stream at the big table. So maybe we can do some of those marathon big sets. Although it took me four and a half hours to build the 900 piece dinosaur skeletons. 
So maybe that's not a good idea. We'll see how things play out. So yeah, we're quickly working through this piece pile here. Give me one moment. I think I got a text. Nope. We're good to continue. That buzz I heard was not a text, but a spam email. I am expecting a text within the next half hour though, so we should be done within a half hour. We've only got about 20 pages of instructions left here. So yeah, the blue plates line up like that. And that's what the car looks like with that assembly on. So we built the bottom edge of the front of the front end of the car there. And it's not secure quite yet. But as we add more pieces, it'll become secure. And there's a cleaver piece somehow. What does that have to do with cars? That's how it's supposed to be oriented. So this goes into the clip. Oh, and when it goes into the clip, it lines up with that stripe. It makes part of the, I'd better make sure it's positioned straight though. I have it crooked. So this lines up with the stripe and it makes up uh, the structure for the center front grill. I think is what's what we're seeing here. So that's a little meat cleaver attachment in the front. That all you'll see when the car is done is the very front edge of that making up some shaping. Meanwhile, let's keep going. This car has some real weight to it. Also, we're, we're putting on the wheel arches in this step. We're going to add it right between the two uh, brackets that we put up like that. And then another one for the other side. And seeing from this angle, I can see my sticker is not totally perfectly straight, but by the time the rest of the front of the car is on, there will be enough shadowing it that it won't be obvious. It's not crooked enough to be noticeable once we finish. So the wheel arches are on the front of the car, and now we're going to keep filling in some of these details here. This car definitely has some weight to it. Okay, these pieces, these plates have clips on them. So that must be where we're going to put the shaping for the hood of the car.
This goes over the little cleaver like this. All right, if we come inside. Okay, so we have the red plate like this going across. And then we have a what's going on here? We have this piece going across here between the clips like that. And then we have a this piece going across here. And then we have these uh, four curved slopes to fill in the uh, shaping of the dash area. So yeah, we're starting to cover up some of the colored sections, meaning we're getting close to the finishing of the build. And then of course the steering wheel goes in the in front of the driver's seat like that. So we just polished out the interior of the car a little bit. It's black on black. I'm having trouble getting the camera into there, but you can see uh, up here where we put the steering wheel. Well, you can't really see it. There you go, from that angle you can see the steering wheel right there. Let's keep going. So we have a long, t uh, okay, I can tell by the stickers going on here and we're now going to work on the sides of the car. And given the big black color blocking on these stickers, it means uh, I gotta line these up with a little more precision because I want the black to go all the way to the uh, bottom edge of the, of the tile while still not leaving too much of a gap at the ends of the tile. It won't crease too much if I don't, until I press it down and then try and pull it up. So as long as I don't press it down all the way, we've got time for adjustment without creasing it. That's almost good, but there's too much of a gap on this side. I don't have, I had it perfectly on the edge of the tile, but not centered down the length of the tile, which is going to be a problem because there's a color blocking going all the way to both ends, which means I want the, uh, I want it to be as uh, centered as possible so that both gaps are minimized. I can't perfectly place it along the edge because if I uh, close up the gap on one end, that will leave a huge gap, a bigger gap on the other end. So I want to try and center this as a, a good as possible. And I can tell that the sticker for the matching tile on the other side is going to be just as much of a pain as this one. Okay, it's on the edge of the tile. 
and then the uh, gaps on either end are approximately even. It's as good as it's going to be. Now let's start filling in. Interesting how it's using colored brackets right here before tr transitioning into the black brackets. This goes along the length of the car like this. Okay, interesting. And we, now we're going to build up the side of the car. This is proving to be a more substantial build than I initially thought looking at the pictures. There's a lot of interesting things going on with the with this car. And I just knocked out the steering wheel. Let's fix that real quick. And then I have this triangle tile also that needs to go on here that just connects with a single stud. Okay, so that's all the stuff we just did building up the side of the car. And now we get to do all the same stuff on the other side. Starting with that one really annoying sticker.
All right, let's keep going. It's not perfect. But then again, neither was the other side. So this will go onto this row like this. Okay. Um And this section goes on like this and fills in that gap there. There we go. Yeah, not a lot of pieces left. We're almost done with this car. Actually, there's only about 10 pages of instructions left. Although the front of the car still looks wildly unfinished. It would be interesting to see how we cram the whole hood of the car into, this, into what's left of the instructions. Wow, that gap in the sticker is very noticeable on this one, on this side. But by the time we fill in the rest of the car, it's not going to be that much of a big of a deal because viewer, viewer's eyes will naturally be drawn to other details, not the huge gap between the sticker and the edge of the tile. little tiles go here. So looks like we're starting to uh, polish off the hood of the car now. Obviously there's still a lot that has to go in there. Lots of little tiling going on here, it looks like. And then this tile here goes over the clips like that. Okay, this is going to be the hood of the car, quite obviously from the inset picture. And these little uh, plates with the clips, it looks like these are going to attach those little clips on front and uh, give us the angling we need to uh, put this uh, hood in the correct position. And 
then if I put this in here, we have uh, got to finish shaping it up here. At least this section is smooth. It doesn't have the studded look that the rest of the car seems like it's going to have. Yeah, I'm pretty much out of pieces at this point. So this will attach into the clips at the front of the car, covering that whole section, and then lowers into position like that. And there's a little bit of a gap there. And then we just put these two little wedge pieces on the corners of the hood like that. To line up with the angling. Like that. That's what it looks like attached. And of course the canopy on top. This is a nice printed canopy. So we stick it on top. Okay. And here you can see the issues with Lego's printing of white on dark colors. You can see how the edge of the canopy up here appears gray on the printed part. It doesn't match up with the white around behind the canopy at all. I also totally misaligned those uh, stickers that are meant to be extensions of the windows. Let's see if I can fix those real quick. I didn't realize that the uh, canopy detail came off to the side like that. Okay, I fixed it on that side. Almost got it here on this side. No, I don't almost got it. At least the creasing is on the white portion of the sticker mm -hmm. where it won't be as noticeable. There we go. Now it looks like a continuation of the window. Yeah, those are lined up much better. And it looks like we have uh, four stickers left. Some more of the silver striping. That we've seen before. Yeah, it might be easier for me to pop out that tile to make sure I can line up the sticker straight. It was centered, but very crooked. That's a little bit better. Yeah, that's pretty good. No, that's not straight. Let's try that again. Uh, 
I wish it would have had us apply this sticker before we clip the hood into the front of the car because it would have been easier to get my fingers in there for preci precision placement. Okay, that's good. And now the headlight stickers, which are pretty much self-contained and not an extension of any color blocking. So there's no reason why I shouldn't get these right. Okay, so the stickers are complete. No more stickers on here. And here's a view of the front of the car with all the all four of the stickers placed. And actually seeing this car, yeah, the design's grown on me a little bit. I like this car. It's definitely got a rougher look than a lot of the other Speed Champions cars. There is a way more exposed studs than on the average Speed Champions car. I love seeing the shaping. I'm not really sure how the designers could have fixed that. But yeah, it is a little less polished than the other cars in the series. But it's still a beautiful car. I like the way it came out. Obviously we're not done because we still have to add the wheels. And this car wants us to use the Pentagon or the star set of wheels. So let's take the uh, let's take the wagon wheels uh, and set them to the side. We'll bring out our tires and we're going to start attaching the, the star wheel covers. So that's what it looks like. That's what our wheel and tire combo looks like. And I'm, just, I'm going to uh, obviously do this four times and then attach these to the front to the around the car. And with the wheels, uh, with the wheels done, we have another car behind us. Our Speed Champions garage is now officially more than half complete, as this was number 21 of 41. So yeah, here's the car complete with its wheels. I'll go ahead and turn the instruction manual off now. And of course, now that the car is built, we have to repair the driver for the race. So we're not going to put him in the car. We're just going to do my normal thing. So let's take the wrench. Okay, he's holding his tool and then we take the helmet and we put his helmet in the other hand. And now, and now he's posing just like all my other drivers pose. So here's another look at the, here's a look, another look at our driver. This really cool racing jacket. There's a look at the back again. Not sure why my camera's not focusing, but you get the idea. Even though it's all gray, and gray is usually a bo uh, I shouldn't say that because I have two all gray cars that are really cool looking, but gray's not as exciting a color in general, but this is a really cool looking racing jacket. So we'll go ahead and we'll put them onto the car and we will look for our exit raid. So there, 
There, there he is. And I will hold him in, up to the camera for you all to see while I uh, figure out who we're rating. Not a lot of choices today. John's on, Issa's on. Oh, Joe's still going? Um, how long has she been going for? She was on before my stream. I want to make sure that I'm not raiding into um, a stream exit. Hold on. We could always raid John Lee. It's been a while since we raided him. Okay. Yeah, they've been going almost four hours. Uh, John sometimes likes to do marathons, though. And then there's this other stream. Give me a moment to figure out who we're going to. All right, I'll turn to a side view now for a little bit. And here's a little bit of a back view. Two and a half hours. Yeah, they're probably close to wrapping. Okay, I'm, I'm just checking out my options here for an exit raid. Ah, they're within the first hour. We can do them. But you know what? Let's just do John Lee tonight. We've raided him before. We're raiding John Lee Music tonight. He's a talented professional musician um, who sometimes does late night marathon streams. I've heard him make up songs on the spot before. He's also the guy who plays chess and Scrabble while singing simultaneously. His show is a, is a fun one. You'll enjoy him. Although I'm sure you've seen him by now if you're a regular on this channel. So let's all go um, enjoy uh, John Lee's music and have a good night. So let's all go. 